It's a very good afternoon to everyone from Thurrock Oakfield. For this afternoon, Thurrock in fourth place in Anglia region. Holt is a, a famous club in Norfolk, which was founded in 1961 by a group of rugby enthusiasts who came from that Georgian town. In Holt, there's a famous school, a public school called Gresham's. And at that school, a Scottish international, Logie Bruce Lockhart, was in fact the head teacher. He became the president of Holt Rugby Club and he allowed the club to play their first matches on the school ground. Uh, Bruce Lockhart had five caps for Scotland and interestingly uh, his son played for London Scottish when Thurrock played against London Scottish in the early 70s and uh, they did very well and it was a nine-all draw. In 1976 uh, Holt won the Nor Norfolk Cup for the first time which was some feat bearing in mind the famous Norwich club also came from Norfolk. Thurrock played Holt in the 1973 Norwich Sevens in the quarter-final and Thurrock turned out victorious in those days, that's 51 years ago. Thurrock played Holt for the first time in this league at the very first game of the season and a tremendous game and Thurrock just about held out to win that game. Unfortunately Jake Bedding uh, pulled a hamstring in that game and he hasn't played since. Of course Holt is famous for the Youngs family, a farming family. Nick Youngs, the father, played scrum half for England. Then he passed on the baton to his son Ben Youngs, who we all know became England's most capped player just last year. And if you go to the whole club, you will find a mural on the wall of the club uh, of the great man himself, Ben Youngs. His brother Tom also uh, played for England and Holt, and both were British Lions in 2013 in Australia. The Van Port Fleet family is also synonymous with Holt and uh, Jack, the current England player, is a cousin of several of the players who've been there. And of course, the great fullback Freddie Stewart is another member of the Holt club. So great illustrious background and as far as I know, this is the first time Holt have been to Thurrock Oakfield, so we wish them well today and we hope it will be a sparkling encounter just as good as the game right at the beginning. Wish him well, the family, that uh, he rests in peace, and the family we send all of our best wishes to. I'd like to welcome our viewers from all over the world, uh, especially Roger and Pam, Roger Scase and his wife, who watch every week. And there's uh, Rolf and Christine Jones in Tenerife today. Hopefully they'll be watching. And there's the Ridings family, Dave and wife are in Mauritius. So a real worldwide uh, feature of the day. We have the usual people in the Cayman Islands, Jenny and Mercedes. We have John Langley down in Tewkesbury. We have the Henderson family in Wales. We have Brian Davis, Bob Williams, former head teachers, also in Wales. And we have people all over the globe. I'm sure we have lots of Italians uh, watching because Marco Marconi, Diana, our cameraman who is also doubling up as a commentator nowadays. Uh, he's from Italy, of course, and he's got lots of family out there. Probably Sicily, isn't it? Sardinia. Sardinia. He corrects me every time. I'm useless on my geography, as uh, Stuart Hughes, Lee, will always tell you. Anyway, good luck to all of our viewers, wherever they may be. Gareth James and uh, Dave Churchwood down in Crickhowell, and all the Crickhowell faithful who watched David Drannis play Crickhowell last week. And so we move to the teams for the day, just before they take the field. <laughs> we are going to do a minute silence before the game and I'll just uh, go onto the field to do that. <laughs> Well, Ralph's making his way down the stairs.
or the scaffolding as it is today because they're reclad in the stand. I'll read you through the uh, the teams. Thurrock, Harry Reynolds 15, Kai Holloway 14, Henry Bird 13, Robert Murphy 12, Angus Paul 11, Alex Jones 10, Scott Chitty 9, Jack Col Coleman 1, uh, Lawrence Brown 2, and Catchpole 3, Tristan Loker or Tanny 4, Callum Watts Adams 5, Jay Jennings 6, Jamie Orr 7, Cody Holloway 8. On the bench is Elliot Chu, George Miles and Will Lewis. Thurrock entering the field. There's going to be a minute silence. I think Ralph may have mentioned it. <laughs> See if I can get through the Holt team before Ralph gets down there. Finley Wilcox, 13. Tom Frower, 14. I'm trying to read Ralph's writing here. Oliver Pierce, 13. Thomas Jackish, he's the captain, 12. Oliver Woodrow, 11. Charlie Gill, 10. Richard Mann, 9. always sad when rugby players pass but as you can see the respect goes from generation to generation right I'm not sure where I was so uh, Harry Pessoa I think is number one Joseph Harrison two Samuel Goose four Robert Gray three Taylor Gowing five Charles, Charles Gowing six Melvin Gilmore seven James Spratt eight on the bench is Nick Hardin, Harry Peasworth, and Jack Smell. Again, sorry if I've got any of those wrong. I'm trying to read Ralph's writing. I think he should have been a doctor. So, Thurrock to start the game off while Ralph reclimbs the scaffolding. He should be with me any second. I see him come out the step ladder. It's got Chitty to kick us off. Holt quickly pick up the ball, come back at Thorick. And Thorick quickly turned the ball over. The so first scrum of the day in the first minute. It's gone down to Thurrock, has got Chitty to put the ball in. for carrying on with the commentary as I was dealing with that uh, rather difficult chore of passing sadly of Morgan Smith quite unexpectedly and Barry Lynn the former Thurrock prop so Holt wearing the orange shirts 
They've had their first penalty. They've kicked onto the third half, quite close to 22. <laughs> So it's the hooker, Joe Harrison, to throw in. He's overthrown. That's come round the catch pole. He's had a late dressing apply to his leg. It wasn't straight in the line out, and so even though Thurrock failed to gain advantage, the referee, uh, Sonny Matthews, has gone back to a scrum. We hope the pitches are particularly good today because we're standing on top of Scaffold, high above Oakfield. There's new uh, cladding and fascia being attached to this wonderful old clubhouse. The Scott Chetty at Scrum Half. Ian and Alex Jones have swapped positions at half back throughout the season. Try to get the goal forward. Even with Catapult's difficult uh, problem with his leg. Jack Kalman there, tight head. Lawrence Brown, quite an outstanding season for Lawrence Brown as ever. Been a real find for the school. Alex Jones has kicked that, but he's found the win difficult. It's given the whole chance to break free. Thomas Jackson, the centre, is the captain for Holt. He had a brilliant game in the previous fixture, beginning of the season. Ferret have come offside, so the referee is playing advantage. Holt a long pass, it's going to be good though. Time from the outside. Kai, Kai Holloway manages to pull him into touch. The referee goes back for the early infringement. Glorious day at the moment in Farrakh. No sign of Storm Kathleen at the moment. And we hope it doesn't arrive at all. She doesn't arrive. Don't speak too soon. Because we're right up on top of the scaffolds. Luckily, I'm standing behind the adequate frame of Mr. Diana. <laughs> adequate. <laughs> and I'm fairly safe. Charming. <laughs> I told him last night, one more carbonara was one too many. <laughs> Great line of ball up the top there. Inside pass. <laughs> had the unfortunate disrobing of a member of uh, the uh, whole team then. The ball has gone forward. One of the props. I'd have to tell you that Robert Gray has moved to tight end and Sam Goose has moved uh, to the second row. And just gander over to see who's playing the second row. Yes, it is. It's uh, Samuel Goose has moved to second row from prop. So Anthony Catchpole, a little bit of difficulty. Injured himself during the warm up. But looks to have regathered his composure. In the first game uh, between the teams, Tom Jackson, the captain, in the centre, Thomas Jackson, he was absolutely brilliant. Uh, he played most of the game at 10, however. Cody Holloway picks up at number eight. And knows a few of the Holt players from his schoolboy days. Scott Chitty feeds Alex Jones on the blind side. Kai Holloway takes a bit of a run on the outside. Brought to ground by his opposite number, Oliver Woodrow. Jay Jennings looking for work. It's a powerful drive from Jay Jennings. Holt inconveniently slow that down for Thurrock, but give away the penalty in the process. Sykes so Jones now to the right touchline. This time he plays safe. Doesn't gain much ground, but secures an attacking line-out. Kieran Watts-Adam is a late arrival today, difficultly getting over the bridge because of the wind. There's a QE2 bridge. Touch, touch. Touch, touch. Touch, touch. Touch, touch. 
Alex Jones feeds Henry Bird. Henry Bird has got his 100th cap today. A fine achievement for the young man since he's recruited for Thoric on a railway train on his way to Bath on holiday. It's a great inside pass from Lawrence Brown to Kai Holloway who dives over in the corner. That's a terrific try and we're really sorry if the scaffold poles have got in the way because I'm sure that uh, Kai Holloway would have loved that on his highlights reel. It wasn't the scaffold poles, it was the, uh, the lampposts for the floodlights. We're sorry about that. Brighton Shoe is a fine sortie up the right hand side of the pitch. Kai Holloway needed no second introduction to the try line, dived over with a fine finish. It's Thurrock 5, Hope nil. Would you like to say the scoreboard is working at the moment? So Henry Bird is one of the game taking this. Once kicked a superb conversion from the touchline to beat Brentwood. The last kick of the game. Alex Jones, who was lined to take the kick, is now holding the ball. It's a fantastic kick from Henry Bird. Repeating, what a way to start your 100th game. Henry Bird is not the most gifted technical kicker, but my word, does he have a mighty wallop when he decides to. Feeds out to the wing, Angus Poole got a fine game against Woodford two weeks ago. <laughs> Outstanding game in fact, scored a try and made another. So Jay Jennings, what a handful that young man is. Tritan Loka. Good continuity from Farrakh Henry Bird, decides to have another dart up the middle. Ball has been knocked forward though, unfortunately. Great pressure play for Thurk. Added that vital continuity, so essential. Today's game. You will from time to time gain a view of the burgeoning presence of that wonderful new building which is Orsett Heath Academy, the brand new school which will open in September. And when we look at the scoreboard end, we'll see the, the burgeoning uh, building which is being overseen by Mr. Lee Hughes at the moment. He's spectating from it. It's a great kick from the coach by half, Charlie Gill. I guess from uh, under the post to the 10 meter line. It's going to be somewhere in the region of about 15 meters. Lovely spiral kick, teasing to the eye. Uh, Caleb Watts Adams wins the line out, but the munificence of the referee doesn't quite stretch to allowing the crooked feed. <laughs> To see Mr. Carl Napierali here this afternoon again, come all the way up from Wales to watch the game, taking his MG sports car. Obviously, fine memories of his youth. So as Richard Mann has come off, has fed that, has come out the middle of the field, chip ahead, a fine chip ahead, could see the variety. Bounces back, both of you gathered. And 
interesting new fight. Tackle didn't roll away, but it must be said that the Melvin Gilmore, the open side fellow, he did uh, roll three times. Directly or in the penalty. So it is Tom Jackson with the kick, with the headgear. I do have to tell you that uh, Martin Jackson, former chairman of Holt, his father is here watching today. And it's a very good afternoon to him. And Chris Harrison also, the uh, father of Joe, Joseph Harrison, the hooker, who's going to throw in. Two very proud parents. The Holt haven't got the line out straight. It's going to be difficult today, obviously very windy on the edge of Storm Kathleen. And one hopes the referee will give the team a little bit of latitude until we get some continuity in the play. So Thoric to Scunnage in the home 22. I must say for this late in the season the pitch looks absolutely magnificent. Christine, Cody Holloway's picked up at eight. Going through the first league tackler, set the ball up, makes Jones a chance to kick the ball away. So the good kick from him, that bouncing touch. Finney Wilcox, the holds full back, isn't able to get there in time, and Thurrock have taken play up to the holds 10 metre line. So we should see a good competition today between uh, Dritan Loka and uh, Sam Goose. Looks if uh, Loka has won that one. Against the throw. Jay Jennings looking for lots of work playing the back row today. A lot of roles there. The referee doesn't seem to worry about that too much. Henry Bird again. Nobody likes tackling Henry Bird. He's is extremely powerful. Jay Jennings again on the charge. This man is indefatigable. Caleb Watts Adams looking for a gap that's missed out. Alex Jones quickly feeds Harry Reynolds. Harry Reynolds back in the full back berth. Harry Spurs came back. Harry played a lot of his rugby on the wing, was quite brilliant for Essex last year. Didn't quite make the final. Um, he went away on holiday. Has been filling in full back since the departure of Reese Cotter to Australia. I wish Reese and uh, Blake Burns well in Australia at the moment. Good pass to play. Good incursion by the full back. Didn't quite uh, move the ball to hand. The sport inside him. Gets ball very quickly, Jackson the centre, another booming kick. This man really has a fierce beat. That's probably a 65 metre kick. And some of the spectators will recall uh, Jackson doing this up at Holt early on the season. I'm sure he would make a very good 10. His ability to kick the ball. Not is not a very, very good centre. So it's a good early morning to our friends in New Zealand at Trent White, Dylan Fearon. Cody Holloway filling in number eight for absent captain Ben Timpson, and the other co leader, Niall Clifford, the Irishman, is also away today. Both picked up injuries last week, which are niggly rather than serious. Henry Bird taking responsibility. Angus Poole has come to the middle of the field. Tries to throw out the back to Kai Holloway. Uh, two problems with that. One, the ball was forward to Kai Holloway. Was already in the entertainment of a very large crowd today. A very large crowd because of the VP's dinner. Uh, it's great to see the president, Brian Howard, and his wife, uh, Diane, here today. Representatives from the whole club and the usual uh, former
former star players like Chris Pullis, Steve Fats, uh, Trevor Burge, Ray Page, Mark Gibbs, and all the way up from Swansea as well. We could have had a lift with us had we not brought the MG. It wasn't enough room. It wasn't even enough room for my luggage. In fact, it was only just enough room for my toothbrush. Another good shot from Farrak. Richard Mann managed to dig that one out though. Pete Jackson of the field, a spin pass. Goes out the right to Tom Thrower. He feeds inside. Both have picked up Harry Reynolds again. The ball has gone forward. Both teams struggling to get to the pace of the game. Fuddly errors creeping in. The first game of the season, which was in September, we were all looking uh, with great expectations of the Rugby World Cup. A sparklingly warm day up at Holt in Norfolk. Unfortunately, we couldn't get the Wi Fi to work, so we missed most of the game, but we, we did try our best. Hopefully, today you're seeing it uh, loud and clear. We're receiving it loud and clear, I should say. Scott Chitty to feed the ball in. We do hope his brother Charlie Chitty is watching, though, of course, he should be playing. So Holloway moves that forward gently. Great pass from Chitty. Alex Jones comes around the loop. He then looks outside. And Harry Reynolds, sorry, he's not the one. Sam Kyle goes outside, inside, and outside. He's going once again the outside. Stanchion once again is in the way. But this time, he didn't quite reach the line. That arch poacher, Caelan Watts Adams. I did announce a couple of weeks ago that Caelan Watts Adams had broken the record for a lock scoring tries for Thurrock. And he superseded the record of James Flavin and Aaron Woodward. There was some dispute, um, largely from Dritton Loker. He was also playing lots of tries himself, but I think this one puts it beyond doubt. So Caelan Watts Adams with the second try for her. This time it's Henry Bird returning the favour, holding the ball whilst Alex Jones attempts the conversion. This time, though, Jones uh, sends it wide. Doesn't quite allow for the win as well as Henry Bird. Perhaps they should have a little reversal. This Parrot 12, Holt nil. We'll just take a look at the, the new scoreboard. I'll show you that sparkling. If you look at the scoreboard, we'll see the spectator balcony behind the post. Mr. New Hill is residing today. Oh, he's going to call Nappy Rana. It's a whole kick-off. Very difficult ball to take. It's very well taken, though. It's against Angus Crew. Crew did come of age last, last game out against Woodford. Very powerful figure once he gets going, Alex Jones. In his 22, the ball was taken back. Just floated out on the wing. Sadly for Jones, he has to go back to the 22 from whence it came. <laughs> Jones on a fine service of the club. Well over 150 games now for the club. Showing his versatility. If he can put a few more 10. And he 
because of an injury or two, called fails, the referee's blown up. This fellow was here today. The legend of Barrow, TDM, and thousands. Next week, Thurgood home to Grasshoppers in the Papa John's Cup. <laughs> so it was a knock on, and Scott Chitty will feed the ball, the scrum. So it trundle forwards, but the ball does go sideways. And Harry Reynolds this time finds a good touch. The referee goes back for a penalty. It seems if the hold scrum was under pressure, which is clearly evident. And that has been the story of the half. Mike Jones finds a safe touch. <laughs> and both hookers having an awful time there throwing the ball in. The wind on that side is blowing right across the pitch. It's a swirling wind, it's very difficult to gauge. It is mainly a southwesterly coming from the River Thames. Driving right across the pitch through a little gap between the school and the artificial pitch, straight to the farm on the opposite end. 
Shouldn't be too much of a difficulty for Holt because they played right in the middle of farmland. Thought a good game, get the drive on this time. They've crabbed sideways and the referee gives a penalty to Holt. Holt have tapped and gone. But the referee has called them back. Tapped the ball quickly but knocked on the process. Even though it seemed to be behind the referee's back, he had eyes in the back of his head. <laughs> Good afternoon, John Thomas down in Swindon. So Scott Chitty, Alex Jones, Henry Bird, short ball to Rob Murphy. Rob Murphy makes good ground, good leg drive. Chitty tries to get the ball away, loses it and Holt take advantage. But again they've knocked the ball on. <clears throat> A little bit of an altercation there. <laughs> Handbags at 50 degrees. Both captains are called forward. Tom Jackson, Cody Holloway. The referee says we'll have no more of that. No more handbags at dawn. And they call that in the women's game. Wallets. Wallets, I should think they call it in women's game. I call that. Wallets at dawn. <laughs> Wallets at dawn. Yeah. Credit cards at dawn. We'll lose made some new friends. Yes, in the uh, viewing area, the classrooms at the end of the pitch. The crowd is now multiplied fourfold. And the scrum is about to start. The camera just gets back in the position on time. Uh, four thoroughbreds backs to the left of the scrum, two to the right. I wonder where it's going. The number it's going to pick up, and there are two players there. Obviously, a set piece move. Harry Reynolds puts Kai Holloway away. Kai Holloway springs down the wing, goes all the way around the outside, but has just been forced into touch. Good move from Thurrock. Excellent deception. Four players to the left of the scrum, two to the right, but the pick up by number eight, Holloway, with a dominant scrum. Enabled Alex Jones to feed Kai Holloway and Harry Reynolds on the right hand side of the pitch. And they came very close to bringing about a third score. It stands, it's Thurrock 12, Holt 0. Thurrock very much against the wind in this half. This time the ball has gone straight over the top to Anthony Catchpole, who's pulled down inches from the line. And Dritan Loka has thrust himself through the gap over the line. I hope he's thanking uh, Catchpole for taking the ball, but Loka comes ever nearer to the record of Watts Adams. Thurrock 17, Holt 0. Now Clifford in the unusual position of bringing on the kicking tee. I'm sure he'd rather be playing. Especially with those fancy new blue boots. So Henry Bird this time, will he allow for the wind? Yes, yeah, too much. The power of his boot. A really dynamic kick, but of course the wind uh, didn't quite take it between the uprights. So it's Thurrock 17, Holt 0. Very similar to the game at Holt early in the season. 
where the score changed the hands on several occasions. The Thurrock were well ahead, then Hull came back into the game and almost stole it. The Thurrock had a fine finale. Charlie Gill, a little short kickoff, and Loka fly kicks the ball, and then unfortunately was knocked on. <laughs> the Albanian not noted for his football skills, but on this occasion manages to win his team a scrum. debate about time wasting in scrums at the highest level. This is fairly straightforward though. Thurrock have gone forward, they could do get the penalty. One wonders why they don't play the advantage. So Alex Jones forced to smash the ball on the second team pitch. Again, thanks to our wonderful ground staff, looks in magnificent condition. It's a great line and drive from Thurrock. Uh, leaving Melvin Gilmore in their wake. They kept going, they're going all the way. This could go a very long way. This is some interference. So still keep a, keep the drive going. Now, unfortunately, because one of the hold forwards has tried to pull the ball to the ground, that looks like uh, Samuel Goose. And the referee has asked him to leave the field for 10 minutes, for a little bit of respite, which certainly won't do the whole scrummage any good whatsoever. They're already under huge pressure, and now they're down to seven forwards. Now they've managed to um, add another person to the scrum, which means they only have five backs. Six, including the scrum half. So they've sacrificed a back. The Thurrock are doing their counting properly, they should have an extra man. So the scrum hole's good. Thurrock go wide, feed the ball out wide, gives Angus Poole a chance to show his paces. He's pulled to ground brilliantly by Oliver Woodrow. Thurrock still come wide, Henry Bird. Henry Bird charging like a bull. Thurrock have a little bit of a white line fever there with huge numbers outside. <laughs> Plenty is imminent. And Cody Holloway took a quick tap and dived over. Then it appeared to be a little bit of retribution somewhere. A bit of white line fever there because Thurrock had a cornucopia of backs waiting for the ball on the wide outside. Angus Poole had come across from the left wing. He was put to ground. Looks as if Thurrock, to all intents and purposes, would score yet another try. But they were held up with another piece of foul play. Thurrock opt for the scrum. So very good afternoon to Steve Bowen and Dennis Stone, the London Welsh contingent. The former captain, Richard Gacious, who was of course the captain on that historic day. He 
1981 when Thurrock, sorry, 1991 when Thurrock defeated London Irish. That was only a decade out. Mark Gibbs and Steve Putts in deep conversation about the finer arts of the game, no doubt. This time, Thurrock keep driving the scrum. Cody Holloway waiting patiently. And the referee this time has given a penalty try. Much to the disappointment of Cody Holloway, who wanted to mark the try for himself. But the seven points awarded there has led to another yellow card for Holt. That's two. So it's Thurrock 24. Hope nil. So, so far, there's been a bountiful half for Thurrock. A quite disastrous half for Holt, who are now facing a 24 point deficit and they have only 13 players on the field. Fortunately, we're just a couple of minutes away from half time. So Thomas Jackson's got a difficult job now pulling his team together. They're trying to hold out for a few minutes so at least they can have one player restored. Good play from Cody Holloway, good play from the Thurrock Scrum. A great kickoff. Uh, unfortunately, Tom Thrower can't hold the ball. That's another knock on, giving Thurrock in yet another scrum. It's always difficult to know what to do in this situation with only 13 players on the field. How many penalties do you concede before you lose another man to the bin? Scott Chitty with a head and feed. Steady enough scrummage though. It's like this time come wide. Angus Poole has come in the line. Harry Reynolds has come in from full back. He throws a dummy, tries to accelerate outside. Just caught by a splendid tackle by uh, Oliver Pierce. Cody Holloway is in the middle of the field. Chitty, Henry Bird. Henry Bird feeds a K Angus Poole, who loses possession in the middle of the field. Gets back to his feet and makes the tackle. Caden Watts Adams has sneaked out to the wing to cover for him. Jackson does feed the ball out wide and gives. It's a lovely little. Lovely little shimmy. <laughs> Oliver Woodrow, lovely little shimmy, and then Thurrock are forced to uh, commit a foul. <laughs> and Harry Reynolds, full back, receives a yellow card. Let's even things up a bit. It's unfortunate for Thurrock, that was their first sort of technical error. Did it warrant a yellow card? I don't know. But the referee has seemed to even things up a bit. And Jackson takes the tap. Sends his number eight thundering forward. That's a high tackle from Loka. First meaningful hold attack. Yet another penalty for a high tackle. Gilmore. So the first time Thurrock have had any real tackling. And Holt go back for the penalty.
Hold have been rather game here and have come back into the game even though they're 27 nil down. And the scoreboard does say 24. They're absolutely right. Sorry. It is 24 nil. 7 17 make 24. Why was I thinking 27? Ball came from an error and a penalty. And with Thurrock losing a man, it does give Charlie Gill a chance to reduce the arrears. Probably a wise thing to do just on the stroke of half time. The ball has fallen to the ground. Jack Cowman stops the ball with his foot and then suddenly realises all of his team are offside. So he corrects his mistake by diving on the ball. Thurrock have gained possession. They throw the ball wide to Henry Bird. Bird through a couple of tackles, puts Rob Murphy away. Rob Murphy having a fine run up in the middle of the field, but he has gone to touch. It's almost a theatrical moment as Jack Cowman trapped the ball with his foot and then realised that he must dive on it, otherwise the whole team are offside and would have conceded another penalty in front of the posts. That was a horrible ball for Charlie Gill to have to kick. The first attempt the ball had fallen over, the second time he was about to fall over as he connected with the ball. Andy Casper was on a field day at the back of the line-out. Jamie Orr, we haven't mentioned him yet, but he was there looking for work. Henry Bird, a terrific handoff. Melvin Gilmore on the floor. Jatan Loka. Wind is playing havoc, and that is a knock on, and Holt get the put in. Both teams are coming to the need to throw long passes in these dreadful conditions. When you get windy days like today, we need sympathetic passes, maybe a couple of switch moves, and feeding the ball gently into the midriff of the oncoming player. Fundamental of rugby football. So, Jackson with an interesting kick, which got out of control. Angus Poole tried to keep it in play, only succeeded in knocking it over his own line, and all were quite close to getting their first points. Instead, because it was carried over, they have a scrummage on the Thurrock line, or five metres out. So in most games, every team will have something of a purple patch. And Old have had just a good five or six minutes. And they have come back into this game. The wind is now freshening as Thurrock drive the scrum backwards. And deservedly, Oliver Woodrow gets over. That's a deserved try for Holt, who have come back into the game, even with 13 players. That will give them some hope for the second half. They have the extra man out wide, who was Oliver Woodrow. It took an almighty effort to actually get the ball out there. 
They managed to get into him and he just managed to outpace the covering number eight, Cody Holloway. So it's Charlie Gill with his second kicking attempt. Sometimes a much better effort, but the ball does go across the face of the post. And the half-time score is Thurrock 24, Holt 5. An interesting half of rugby, which Thurrock took an early lead. They managed to capitalise on some poor line-out play with the wind uh, with them by Holt. Thurrock gained uh, ample possession to attack the line, made the extra man a couple of occasions, and then sped into a, a lead of 17 points to nil. That was followed by a penalty try, which took him out of 24. With Holt receiving the second yellow card, um, it looked when they were down to 13 men as if they would really struggle, but in fact, they managed to come back into the game with some enterprising play, and they've reduced the deficit to 24-5. Well, this weekend, uh, there are lots of European games going on. There was a highly entertaining game last night between Harlequins and Glasgow. But a couple of splendid side steps by Marcus Smith took him over for what was one of the best moments of the match, and Harlequins managed to win through. So it's good luck to Harlequins and uh, some of Thurrock's old former players, particularly Jim Evans, uh, who was once the longest-serving Harlequins player. 10 years in the fold in the second row. Of course, Hicker Reed uh, was a coach there. He was also a player coach at Thurrock. So we look forward to the rest of the European Games over the weekend and hopefully some of the English clubs can go a long way in that competition and challenge the dominance of the Irish and the French clubs in recent years. As for this league, Anglia Region 2, it's been a fine season for Thurrock. They currently stand in fourth place. If they manage to follow through with a victory today, they will finish in fourth place. That'll be their highest league position probably in the last 10 or 11 years. So a fine season for uh, Martin Jones, Dave Stevens, Dave Catchpole and the other coaches, uh, Mike Dunk, the manager, and the players. A young contingent of players, they've done the club proud this year and everyone is looking forward to the opening of the brand new school which you'll be able to see in a minute as we pan around uh, Orsteeth Academy, part of the South West Eskis Community Education Trust with sparkling new artificial pitch in front of it the Spectator Gallery which is often used by the Thurrock T-Birds, the ladies some very good news on that front as last week the Thurrock uh, ladies second team managed to book their trip to Twickenham for the final of the Papa John's Cup and uh, all of Thurrock will be hoping the ladies the first team will be able to manage to get there as well I'm sure Mr Marco Marconi will bring you up to date on that one as soon as he's able to get hold of the microphone so what's next for the ladies we're at Twickenham Gabby will be back. She should get signed off with a, a broken arm being repaired on the 3rd of May and the game is on the 12th of May. So it'll be three months on the 5th and as she's already asked the doctors, will I be able to play? And they laughed at her and said, are you mad? <laughs> so it's Gabriella Diana, of course, the, the daughter of Marco Diana and she's hoping to take her place at Twickenham. And we're hoping to cover that game live as well, if the rugby union will allow us to. We'll be in contact with them and we'll do our best to make that happen. In the meantime, uh, Holt having some refreshments, much needed refreshments. And down there, the referee, Simon Matthews of the London Society, is waiting for the third team to emerge back from the sheds, as they say in New Zealand. Uh, thanks to uh, Mr. Neil Spate, the 
editor of Tottenham News for his coverage this season. It's been magnificent as usual. And if you don't uh, read Third Club News, there's a report on all the matches every week and a preview of the following week's matches. As this is the last league game of the season, we would like to thank all of our sponsors and all of our fans. And we thoroughly hope that you've enjoyed this season and we look forward to coverage again next season. There's a little bit more work to do next week. Thurrock played Grasshoppers in the first round of Papa John's Cup. So we're hoping to be able to cover that one from our new vantage point. And we are hoping that the coverage today is better than usual, if that's possible, because we're at a much higher location. We're hoping to get through today before Storm Kathleen uh, eventually arrives. And I'll let you know the last time we had a significant storm, the television gantry blew down. Luckily, we weren't in at the time. But that was due to Jason Bedding, who, the master builder, who didn't quite uh, get the gantry right to withstand the, uh, the conditions we're getting nowadays. We're hoping this, this uh, scaffold wasn't erected by him. And so here we go for the second half. Yes, the best season uh, for 10 or 11 years. And of course, in those heady days, uh, Thurrock was served by the likes of Mike Stanley. Uh, ben Timson was playing those days, of course. Marcus Bertram and a host of players are nowadays playing in the Championship Division 1, Stephen North. And uh, they, they actually won their league and end up in National Division 3. But they more than held their own. Bradley Rettigan, the star of those days. So it's Charlie Gill to kick off the second half. It's hanging beautifully in the wind, but it's very well taken. Jamie Orr's had a fine season, New Zealander. Good to see him back from injury. <coughs> Nick Jones feeds a ball outside. Henry Bird now kicks the ball downfield. Wisely using this very strong wind. <coughs> and hold very wisely taking the ball through the hands. Henry Bird had followed up his own kick and managed to fling Oliver Woodrow, the try scored into touch. <coughs> Angus Poole has played much of his rugby at centre, was moved the wing by Martin Jones a couple of weeks ago. It certainly proved his worth. Jay Jennings takes a fine ball to the front of the line out. Driving ball was a potent weapon for Thurrock in the first half. They start to march the hold forwards back once again. Scott Chitty though delivers the ball. Henry Bird feeds a short ball to Rob Murphy. Murphy gets half away, going close. Almost over the line, the ball comes out wide. Alex Jones feeds Jack Cowman the prop. Another forward would ask what he was doing out there. And the answer was simple. He knew the try was coming. He knew where to be. 
a finely poached try. And he's not letting go of the egg. Just trying to show everybody, especially his mother, he scored a great try. An excellent start of the second half from Thurrock. Great line out win by Jay Jennings. Wind was difficult. An excellent drive and more or less a textbook try for Thurrock. It looks as if they are alternating kickers. It is 29 points to 5 this time, Alex Jones. And Alex Jones has slotted that one, it's 31 points to 5. Another great kickoff from Charlie Gill has been knocked on by Holt. The referee plays advantage. For a take advantage, Cowman with a shift on. Advantage over. Henry Bird goes on the outside, dips his shoulder. Pierce does well to tackle Henry Bird. This time Thurrock have sealed off. Quick tap by Richard Mann. It's a kick which has gone awry. George Miles on the field. It's come on for uh, come on for Anthony Catchpole, who was carrying something of an injury just as the game started, but more than played his part, especially at the back of the lineout. This time Thurrock throw the wild pass. It goes into touch. Advantage hold. Ball is snaffled to the back of the line out by George Miles, playing the Andy Catchpole role. I think it props one more line ball than anybody else. This time, uh, Holt go for the deception. Caelan Watts Adams gets into open play. Well tackled by Jackson. Alex Jones, first receiver. Jamie Orr, another penalty of Thurrock. Alex Jones opting to use the win, going for the far side of the field. Gives the ball some air, the wind does the rest. <laughs> we do have to say the weather forecast is absolutely right. Now the wind is southwesterly, it's a warm wind. Bit of a Sirocco. Third ball carriers line up. Henry Boo, a very solid pass. Harry Reynolds back on the field, comes to the line. An excellent jackal by Holt, back row in concert, Charles going, Melvin Gilmore, James Spratt. And Holt are restored to full complement as our Thurrock. That ball has gone to the roof. And the cameraman is uh, getting prepared to climb onto the roof. No, he's not. Apologise if you lost pitcher, the cameraman was tempted to get onto the roof to get the ball. It's a great pass by Alec Jones right across the field to Kai Holloway. He throws the dummy, he's still sprinting forward. He eventually gets the ball out to uh, Harry Reynolds. 
Third get held up close to the line. The ball is held up. <laughs> Attempt a quick dropout from behind the line. Oops. Unfortunately, it hasn't gone far enough. It was enterprising, though. Enterprise not rewarded. <laughs> uh, Graham Holbrook, Aaron Harding here this afternoon. Of course, we're all missing the redoubtable Peter Worsfold. We wish him well. We hope that Steve Bowen, a.k.a. Shawadi Wadi, is enjoying his game at London Welsh today in the reunion with Dennis Stone and the other London Welsh faithful. Thurrock, of course, strong connections with London Welsh. Thurrock were once known as the second best Welsh team in England. It's a great switch between Alex Jones and Henry Bird. And Henry Bird has waltzed over there, marking his 100th game with a great try. A nice move between Alex Jones and Henry Bird in a sequence which uh, Ray Davis, another great centre and for Thurrock would have called the Sesu scissors in Welsh, for those who didn't know. And Alex Jones this time kick, kicks the conversion without any help. So the score stands at Thurrock 38. Hold five. So Mark O'Dan, the cameraman, is attempting to get the ball off the roof. And I suggest he doesn't go any further in the absence of another cameraman. <laughs> Charlie Gill tries to go outside Henry Bird. Thomas Jackson's in support. Thurrock attempt to lift the player through the horizon. That isn't allowed. Gilmore throws a dummy, perhaps rather unwisely. He then gets clattered. But oh, do move the ball wide. It's a good movement for them. Pierce tries the dummy. The ball has gone forward. <laughs> so Lawrence Brown has been a, a fine player throughout the course of this season and uh, an excellent addition to the squad since he arrived a couple of years ago. It's just as well he's been in such good form because Dan Ulf, the other hooker in the squad, has been injured for most of the season. But one should not underestimate the part played by Lawrence Brown. Very quiet, unassuming man and very polite and modest. A brilliant tackler, great at the breakdown. Fine season for him. As Kai Holloway is coming from the left wing, and he feels that feels gives the ball to 17-year-old Elliot Chu. Elliot Chu has come on the field instead of Angus Poole. Elliot Chu, the young man who played outstandingly well at scrum half in his first ever game at scrum half down to Abzleri in Wales in the first game of the season, pre-season. 
So it's good to see him getting an opportunity again. This time's a quick throw in the line out. It's Joe Harrison. He's throwing the ball straight to the prop, Harry Prone. And this is Jack Small who's come on the field. There has been a high tackle. And uh, a little bit of afters there for a couple of people. Charles going. Wasn't taking any of that, Melvin. Melvin Gilmore, quick tap and go. Third game position. Real heart being shown by Holt. They're not about to give up the fight anytime soon. And Will Lewis has come onto the field. Uh, Will Lewis doing good impression of Absolary's Callum Kelly. I think it's probably the hairstyle. Uh, Dritton Loka has moved from the field. Jay Jennings moved to the second row, and it means Will Lewis has come on the field. Lawrence Brown and Jay Jennings, splendid, almost unseen work. One went high, one went low, and Alex Jones taking a quick pass. Unfortunately, Scott Chitty has knocked the ball on. Very difficult ball to take in the swirling wind. The old players congratulate each other for the pressure they brought. Which enforced the knock on. It's right there. 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 We do apologise if there's any bad language there. Did you hear it on the microphone? <laughs> Timbers are a little flared there, unfortunately. Such a pity because these two teams have played both games in good spirit. That's Robert Gray, who was due to start in the second row, has moved into tight head prop position. Has obviously taken umbrage of something. It really was storming the teacup. <laughs> Talking of storms, it's getting rather blustery up here. It looks as like if it could get wet. If that's the case, we might as well take that position in the lower tier, the scaffold. We've got a little protection from the scaffold boards. But we weren't that prescient. So hold to reward a penalty. Thomas Jackson, the captain, is called over. <laughs> Convoluted conversation between the captain and the referee. Hold, do get the penalty. 
Throw take a position. Hold have a tate a tate. And John O'Keefe and Mark Chambers, a couple of old Thurrock players there with Jake Bedding who starred in the first match between these two clubs until he pulled a hamstring on his third 100 metre sprint. So it's a better line out from Holt. Number eight James Spratt though is thrown to the ground with a head roll and subsequently Subsequently, it looks if I'm um, not quite sure whether somebody has been removed from the field. Jay, Jay Jennings. So Holt pushed the ball in the corner. We apologise for that scrappy period of play. Spratt has won the ball. Farrakh repel the drive. Give away another penalty. is very dissatisfied with Farrakh but that is a dominant tackle George Miles to the four with Lawrence Brown with Charlie Gill knocking that on the advantage is over This whole response has been good, but it's been met with fire from Thurrock. A little malevolence. And we have to tell you that the wind is freshening quite considerably. This time Cody Holloway picks up as the Thurrock scrum is under pressure. Alex Jones a little chip ahead. Well taken by Finney Wilcox. Feeds the ball inside to Jackson. Pierce the outside center. Jack Cowman, Jamie Orr. Jackson throws a long ball. This time there's a knock on the middle of the field. Farrakh almost pick up and accelerate away, but they've knocked on as well. And so with two consecutive knock-ons, the referee goes back toward the scrum to Farrakh. called chaos that move as Cody Holloway picks up the back Scott Chitty went the blind side and then uh, no end of fumbles Holt got the ball then they also concede the penalty pandemonium that little episode of play well that's the drama of the game 
I have to say that I was very grateful to Mr. Carl Napier Rala today for driving me up to this venue in the Red Peril car, the MG sports car. I was extremely uncomfortable for most of the journey. The heating was working permanently. It was very hot and my head kept going through the ceiling. But I managed to get here in time. The trains, of course, were not running. That was the problem. Thank you, GWR. As this time Scott Chitty goes for the gap, he's hauled back by the collar of his shirt. Watts Adams gets a short ball, he's looking for the try line again. Very well supported by Holloway. Quick ball from Thurrock, sees Henry Bird. And Henry Bird has got his second. <laughs> That man today is zealous for action. He likes nothing better than scoring. Watts Adams looks as, it looked as if he'd burst through, but he had another try from the second row. But Henry Bird was having nothing of it. His co-center for most of the season, uh, now Clifford has brought the tee onto the field. It's Bird who will now do the humble holding of the ball while Alex Jones lines up the conversion. This time Jones allows the win quite nicely. It's 45 points to five. We'd like to thank Martin Morgan from Rugby Club magazine for the splendid magazine issue 97. Uh, which lots of members of Thurrock Rugby Club have bought. And if anybody else wants to buy them, we've now run out of stock. And so issue number 97, Rugby Club magazine, is what you need to look for. It is online. Lovely take, a simple take for Caelan Watts-Adams, who's gobbled up those kickoffs throughout this season. Holloway will dummy up the middle, Jamie Orr. In unison, Alex Jones. This time, Henry Bird is thrown a difficult pass behind him. It leaps out of his grasp like a salmon, looking for safety. A bit of miscommunication. Probably Rob Murphy was in a better position to receive that pass. Great thing about this season for Thurrock is lots of youngsters have been blooded and they've shown they can take their opportunities when they arise. The team has been blended with some splendid performances from some of the seasoned campaigners, like some Niall Clifford, Ben Timpson. Alex Jones to come back into the team. Having spent a little time away because he was on the clock. So Richard Mann to feed the ball to a much depleted whole team who have come back into the game. He drives hard to Scott Chitty's opposite number. Elliot Chew has come across the field. He throws a lovely pass in the midfield to Harry Reynolds, who is unable to take it. There is no advantage. <laughs> a disappointed Rob Murphy. Looks on disgust. It looks as if Thurrock were away from their own 22. Henry Bird has gone down and looks like a cramp for him. He wouldn't want to leave the field on this uh, century of performances.
recruited on a train to Bath. Uh, he was going on a shopping trip, I think, at the time. But more than happy to come to Thurrock, and he's been a major success at Thurrock throughout the last five or six years. I'm sure manager Mike Dunk will be very pleased with the work done by Henry Bird over the last few years. Good to see Harry Reynolds back in the fold. It has been a breakthrough season for him. There's a lot more to come from this very speedy and muscular young man. So Richard Mann persists. Holt have picked up at number eight is Spratt. Very well tackled by his opposite number. Chitty goes diving in for the ball, a la Danny Kerr. What a game he had last night. In some huge tackles. I've never seen it before. And the catch pole is back on the field. This looks like a tactical ploy by Thurrock. Jack Cowman is given a rest. So it looks as if uh, Dave Stevens is rotating the, uh, the front row somewhat. Saving energy. When Thurrock began the season, in early September at Holt was with great optimism. Unfortunately, they were depleted by many injuries throughout the course of the season, which somewhat scuppered their hopes and opportunities of getting promotion. Nevertheless, they've beaten most of the top teams and shown what is possible next season. And James Spratt has just seen a gap and he's walked through the gap and dived over for a try. It's completely unnecessary at this stage of the game. The contest well out of Holt's reach. And why would anybody want to receive a card at this stage in the season? Unfortunately, it is Captain Cody Holloway who receives a card, a yellow card. And there's a red card. Can't quite see who that is. There have been some touchy aspects of this game and they've resulted right at the death of a couple of players being sent off. Uh, I could see at least one red card, I'm not sure where there were two red cards. But I must say, absolutely pointless. Conversion falls short, it is 45 points to 10, Thurrock lead. But both teams reduced to 14 players. And one can only assume that is two red cards. We weren't quite able to see. Maybe it was one red and one yellow because Thurrock received a penalty on the halfway line. So that would suggest that the whole transgression was greater than the Thurrock transgression. 
Nevertheless, the try did stand. Great throw in difficult circumstances by Lawrence Brown. Kai Holloway feeds the ball out to Harry Reynolds. It's a great tackle on Reynolds, inches from the line. Sorry, centimetres from the line, we should say, in this post-Brexit era. It looked ostensibly as if Harry Reynolds was cruising the corner, but across came Tom Thrower and Oliver Woodrow, and uh, he was tackled brilliantly, just a little way out from the line. Third lost possession. Unfortunately, Scott Chitty has gone to ground. It's been a valiant season from Scott Chitty, coming back from serious injury. He deserves to uh, come away at the end of the season, retaining most of his fitness. He hasn't done any serious damage to his leg. He's managed to leave the field with a little bit of help. So we hope that's good news for the young man. He certainly deserves good news. Fumbled. Thought I could have taken a quick penalty. That's the 50 up. That's a fine opportunist effort from Alex Jones. I'm sure his mother and father in Tenerife or the Cayman Islands or somewhere will be uh, very happy to have seen Alex Jones spotting gap, taking a quick tap, plunging over. Bring up the 50 points and uh, about to take the conversion. We might just get away with uh, missing Storm Kathleen if we're lucky. If the referee blows up in the next couple of minutes. Alex Jones is at the post, but it is, it is 50 points to 10. And the referee decided he wants some more. <laughs> I suppose the rather embarrassing indiscretions of both sides have meant we do have a little extra time. <laughs> It's all grist to the mill, of course, for the spectators who are enjoying a lovely afternoon out, having sampled the joys of the bar previously. <laughs> Alex Jones goes for the box kick. No, he doesn't. He goes for ground. It's a low kick across the ground. Has gone into Holt's half. 
Finney Wilcox being hunted down by Rob Murphy and co. This is given that Tom throw a chance going the outside. Elliot Chu is having none of it. Textbook tackle from the young man. Brings throw to ground. Ball has been lost forward, much to the chagrin of Oliver Pierce. Thurk have the put in. And with Chitty going off, it means that Angus Poole has come back onto the field. Alex Jones goes back to his normal position of scrum half. We're out of his 400 uh, and odd games, sorry, 400, 150 odd games for Thurrock. He's probably played about 130 odd at scrum half. So it should be no real loss. Just looking to see how Scott Chitty is. Seems to be sitting reasonably comfortably. So both packs reduced to seven. Scrum swivels around. Henry Bird has gone to ten. Rob Murphy throws a dummy in the middle of the field. Makes ground, goes to ground. Bird now throws out a long pass. This time it's picked up by Kai Holloway. Looks to the outside. Nice handoff from him. Accelerates away. It'll chip ahead. Ball bounces well for Wilcox. He's tackled over his own line. That's a scrum five. Good enterprise acceleration from Kai Holloway. Kicked ahead, got there first, made the tackle on Wilcox. Unfortunately, it looks like a very long trip back for Holt at this mauling by Thurrock. They have played their part in the game. They've never given up. And at various stages, they have come back into the game. Deserve their couple of tries. It's just a shame on occasion there were a few niggly moments has led the sendings off. Rob Murphy receiving a little bit of attention from Alex Evans. Former student at Cardiff Metropolitan University. Like so many people in Thurrock. Formerly called uh, UWIC, Cardiff Training College, Cardiff College of Education. So Jamie Orr has now moved to number eight, picks up at the back. Let's give him hold a chance to break clear. Defence by Holt, saw them clear their lines. Henry Bird has moved into a quite familiar position of 10. Rob Murphy now form a centre partnership with Angus Poole, Harry Reynolds at full back, and Elliot Chew and Kai Holloway on the wings. So a little bit of reorganisation for Thurrock. Martin Jones urging his troops to finish the season with strength. Considerable optimism after victory at Holt at the beginning of the season. And now considerable optimism for next season on the back of this display today, where they have amassed 50 points. Catch bow. 
Gets better, matures like a good wine. Bobby Gray, the uh, second row, has managed to get out in the middle of the field. The Henry Bird is on the charge once again. This man with a John Devereux type handoff goes looking for handoffs, I'm sure. Thurk have thrown the ball wide. Jamie Orr throws it out to Anthony Catchpole, who sprints over like an Olympic decathlete. No wonder his nickname is Tank. He was unstoppable at that stage. The man was due to retire five or six years ago. Thought he'd played a little bit of fourth team rugby, came back to Thurrock, has enjoyed a splendid uh, career since. Coming back from fairly major injury a year or so ago, there was no way anybody was going to stop him scoring that try. Much to the delight of his father, Dave Catchpole, a legendary player for Saracens, Pontypridd, and uh, Thames, and now a thorough coach. Of course, in the annals of history, that will go down as a 70-yard sprint. <laughs> Spike Jones with another attempt at conversion. This time, unfortunately, drops short. And the referee blows the final whistle. And it's Thurrock 55, Holt 10. Well, the people who turned up to Thurrock Oakfield today for the VP's dinner were treated to an outstanding game of rugby. Very similar to the game at Holt at the beginning of the season. Not quite the same weather conditions. If you're booking your holiday, book it in August and September, not in April. That's the answer. But Thurrock today, were dominant for most of the game. Holt uh, showed real courage coming back in the game at various stages. They scored a couple of good tries of their own. But for Thurrock it has been a uh, first class season and they will finish fourth in Anglia Region 2, the highest position they've, they've been in for at least 10 years. So next week we look forward to the Papa John's Cup, the camp, Cup campaign will begin and uh, Thurrock will be at home to Grasshoppers. In the meantime, stay tuned in as ladies reach the climax of their season with the first team playing Sale and the second team going immediately to Twickenham for their final. So coaches Dave Stevens, Dave Catchpole, Martin Jones will be delighted with that performance as will manager Mike Dunk. So we bid you farewell from Thurrock Oakfield. Thank you for watching. We thoroughly enjoy, enjoy, hope you enjoyed the coverage today. And as Storm Kathleen closes in, we'll say goodbye and we look forward to seeing you in the next league season from this wonderful venue. Good afternoon.